Humanity has looked at the moon for centuries as a symbol of romance, the unknown and permanence. But what do we really know about it? It might seem that Earth's satellite has been thoroughly studied and its secrets revealed. However, the far side of the moon, mysterious and inaccessible to direct observation, continues to provoke questions and mysteries that make scientists and dreamers alike gaze in awe into the depths of space. Recent discoveries made by the James Webb Space Telescope and lunar missions have shocked the scientific community. Unusual substances, strange glass spheres and mysterious noises are just the tip of the iceberg. Some claim this could be the key to understanding the geological history of the Moon, while others suggest the possibility of something more, perhaps extraterrestrial. If the Moon holds such secrets, how could they have eluded our attention for so long? What lies in the eternal shadow of the far side? It's a unique opportunity to uncover the mysteries of the universe's origin, make unexpected discoveries about Earth's past, and perhaps find traces of other civilizations. Or are we simply facing a riddle of nature that is waiting for its explanation? Answers or new questions? What lies ahead for us? If the mysteries of the moon's far side and the possibility of untold discoveries excite you, don't miss out on future explorations. Like this video to show your support for unraveling cosmic enigmas and subscribe to our channel for more deep dives into the secrets of the universe. Together, we'll journey beyond the known and uncover what lies in the eternal shadow of our closest celestial neighbor. Your curiosity powers this adventure. The far side of the moon, invisible from Earth due to the synchronous rotation of the moon around its axis and orbit, has long remained an unexplored territory for science. This region has always intrigued researchers due to its mystery and unique characteristics. While the near side is covered with vast seas of solidified lava, the far side is marked by numerous craters and an almost complete absence of flat areas. These differences raise many questions about the Moon's formation process and its evolution. Modern technologies have opened new horizons for scientists. Thanks to missions like China's Chang'e 4, it has become possible to study the surface of the far side of the Moon in detail for the first time in history. The Chinese Autonomous Interplanetary Station features a lander weighing 1,200 kilograms, equipped with a 140 kilogram lunar rover. The rover is outfitted with two foldable solar panels, a six-wheeled chassis, a communication antenna, and four panoramic cameras capable of working simultaneously. On board, there is a suite of scientific instruments, including a geo-radar to study the regolith layers, an image spectrometer operating in the visible and near-infrared ranges, an energetic neutral atom analyzer, and other specialized tools for studying the surface and atmosphere of the Moon. The equipment is powered by thermal blocks based on radioisotope energy sources utilizing alpha decay energy from plutonium-238 isotopes. The structures are made from composite materials. On January 3, 2019, at 6.40 Moscow time, the Chinese spacecraft made history by capturing a close-up image of the far side of the Moon's surface. The image was successfully transmitted to Earth via the relay satellite, Quechiao. A particular focus for scientists was a young crater in which an unusual substance was discovered. Its appearance was markedly different from the surrounding terrain, sparking significant interest among researchers. This substance was unofficially named Gel with a Mysterious Shine which only heightened public curiosity about the find. To study it in greater detail, the U-22 rover approached the crater almost closely. The rover is equipped with the VNIS spectrometer, which records light reflected from the surface of materials, allowing for chemical composition analysis. However, despite the conducted studies, scientists have not yet been able to precisely identify the nature of this substance. Clive Neal, a professor from the University of Notre Dame, speculates that the material might be impact glass. Such glass forms as a result of meteorite impacts on the Moon's surface, which cause the lunar rocks to melt. While this hypothesis is plausible, it has not been definitively confirmed, leaving room for further scientific discoveries. The James Webb Space Telescope, with its ability to study distant cosmic objects in detail, also plays a key role in lunar research. This instrument has discovered thousands of previously unknown galaxies and provided unique data about the Moon. Recently, 
Scientists using the James Webb Telescope discovered two of the most distant and early galaxies in the universe, born just 330 million years after the universe's formation. The James Webb Space Telescope also made an important discovery by detecting carbon dioxide on Uranus's moon Ariel. This discovery suggests the potential existence of a hidden subsurface ocean, significantly expanding the prospects of finding extraterrestrial life within our solar system. Thanks to these advancements, it has become clear that the far side holds far more than previously anticipated. Why does the far side differ so greatly from the visible side? These differences raise new hypotheses about the processes that might have occurred during the early stages of the Moon's formation. However, the successes in studying the Moon not only raise scientific questions, but also intensify international competition. Will countries be able to unite for a common goal? Or will rivalry hinder progress? What will the next steps be in studying mysterious anomalies, such as glass spheres and lunar whirlpools? The increasing number of discoveries on the far side of the Moon not only raises new scientific questions, but also fuels numerous speculations. For example, the discovery of glass spheres during the U-22 mission has attracted widespread attention both among scientists and conspiracy theorists. There is no great mystery in the find. As Zhi Yunxiao and his co-authors suggest, the spheres likely formed from a meteorite impact or volcanic activity that persisted in the early eras of the Moon's existence. Previously, similar glass spheres had been found on the Moon, but they were predominantly small and cloudy particles within the regolith. The newly discovered spheres are significantly larger, with diameters ranging from 1.5 to 2.5 centimeters, comparable to samples returned to Earth by the Apollo 16 astronauts. What sets these spheres apart is their almost transparent structure, which distinguishes them from similar finds on the near side of the Moon. Scientists hope that these samples contain unique data about the Moon's geological composition and formation history. Some images taken by the U-22 rover reveal other similar objects, but due to the limited resolution of the camera, their nature cannot yet be definitively determined. However, it is not only the mission finds that have sparked lively debates. Strange phenomena, such as mysterious noises heard by the Apollo 10 astronauts in 1969, continue to intrigue the public. NASA's official explanation, radio interference, has failed to convince many, especially considering that the far side of the Moon blocks radio waves from Earth, making such phenomena particularly intriguing. This feature of the Moon, along with its isolation, often leads to hypotheses about hidden bases, extraterrestrial objects, or even remnants of unknown civilizations. Another mysterious phenomenon is the so-called lunar vortices, bright formations on the Moon's surface that can even be seen through amateur telescopes. Images obtained by NASA show that some of these whiskers stretch for hundreds of kilometers, forming complex structures. To date, Scientists have no definitive explanation for the nature of these lunar vortices. However, recent modeling and data from space probes have provided new ideas. Research has shown that rocks in these vortices possess magnetic properties, enabling them to deflect or redirect particles from the solar wind. These particles constantly bombard the Moon's surface, triggering chemical reactions and darkening the rocks. At the same time, the magnetized areas remain light and protected from this effect. The main question is how the rocks on the Moon could become magnetized, given that the Moon lacks a global magnetic field. Michael J. Kravchinsky from the University of Washington in St. Louis suggests that meteorite impacts could have caused local magnetic anomalies. However, he notes that some vortices are so complex in shape and size that they cannot be explained solely by meteorite impacts. Kravchinsky also points to the possibility that iron-rich material may have arrived on the Moon through meteorites. In his view, something on the Moon's surface may be magnetizing this material. An alternative theory suggests the presence of solidifying lava beneath the surface, which creates magnetic anomalies. On Earth, rocks easily become magnetized due to the presence of magnetite, but this mineral is absent on the Moon. However, ilmenite, which is widespread on the Moon's surface, can form metallic iron particles and become magnetized under certain conditions. Scientists note that smaller grains of ilmenite generate stronger magnetic fields due to the larger surface-to-volume ratio. 
Although these phenomena remain at the level of hypotheses, they underscore how much the moon remains a realm of mystery. New discoveries inevitably lead to speculations that sometimes go beyond scientific rigor. But does this shadow behind the visible anomalies hold a real mystery? Could further study lead us to even more astounding findings? The far side of the moon is not only a scientific mystery, but also a potentially strategically important area for humanity. Its isolation from Earth's radio interference and its constant shadowed region make it a unique object for various purposes, ranging from scientific research to potential military projects. This characteristic has long attracted the attention of government organizations and has even sparked several high-profile theories about hidden military bases and secret operations. One such theory is the Horizon Project, proposed by the United States. Initially, this project was conceived as an attempt to create a permanent American base on the moon, which could be used not only for scientific research, but also for the placement of nuclear weapons. President Dwight Eisenhower rejected the initiative to avoid the militarization of space. However, the lack of transparency around some space programs continues to raise doubts among the public. Is it possible that such projects were secretly carried out? Scientific discoveries only enhance the strategic appeal of the moon. For example, the potential presence of water ice in craters located on its dark side makes this area important for future space missions. Ice could be used to obtain water, oxygen, and even fuel, which could drastically simplify long-term human presence on the moon or in its vicinity. These resources represent a crucial step towards lunar colonization and the establishment of permanent bases, which, in turn, intensifies the competition between major space powers. However, questions remain. Can modern projects be limited to purely scientific goals? Or are we witnessing the birth of a new space race, where the moon will become not only a place for research, but also a battleground for political and strategic ambitions? The complete absence of radio interference from Earth makes this area an ideal location for placing sensitive radio astronomy instruments. One of the most promising projects is the creation of the Lunar Crater Radio Telescope, LCRT. NASA is developing a radio telescope project, which is planned to be placed on the far side of the Moon, inside a lunar crater. This radio telescope will be capable of operating in the radio wave range, with wavelengths from 10 to 50 meters, 630 megahertz. If the project is realized, it will become the largest radio telescope with a full aperture in the solar system. In 2020, the Lunar Crater Radio Telescope project entered its first phase of development, receiving a research grant of $125,000 from NASA. In April 2021, the project received additional funding of $500,000 from NASA and entered its second phase of development. The construction of the radio telescope is planned to be carried out using robotic systems with no direct human involvement. Duaxel rover robots will stretch a wire mesh about one kilometer in diameter inside a lunar crater ranging from three to five kilometers, and a suspended receiver will be placed at the center of the structure. Another important instrument is the Shadow Cam, a unique telescopic camera developed by NASA for the South Korean probe Danuri, the first lunar spacecraft of South Korea. The camera is built on the Ritchie Creechin design and is equipped with a primary mirror 195 mm in diameter. It is additionally equipped with a passive cooling system and a light protective shield, making it extremely sensitive. Its resolution is 1.7 meters per pixel, and its sensitivity exceeds that of the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter's narrow angle camera by more than 200 times. These outstanding characteristics allow ShadowCam to capture detailed images of permanently shadowed craters near the lunar poles. ShadowCam's images will help scientists analyze the distribution and volume of water ice in polar craters, which is crucial for preparing future crewed missions to the Moon. In December 2022, the Danuri probe entered its working circular polar orbit around the Moon at an altitude of about 100 kilometers. On January 9th, 2023, NASA released the first image taken by ShadowCam. It captured part of Shackleton Crater, which is 21 kilometers in diameter, located at the Moon's South Pole. The image, 20-40 meters wide, clearly shows the steep side wall of the crater, the floor covered in small craters, 
and the trace of a five-meter boulder that had rolled down. However, despite all the advantages, the implementation of such projects faces technical and financial challenges. Extreme temperatures, long periods of darkness, and the lack of an atmosphere create numerous obstacles for the operation of instruments. Will scientists be able to overcome these barriers and fully utilize the far side of the moon as an astronomical platform? Or will there be a need for a new wave of international cooperation to realize such ambitious projects? What will change in space exploration when the first permanent settlement is established on the moon? Scientific and technological advancements of recent decades have created the conditions for the return of humans to the moon and the expansion of space exploration boundaries. According to representatives of NASA and the European Space Agency, ESA, the Artemis program will not only demonstrate progress in lunar exploration, but also show what has changed in space research over the past half century. Since the last human landing on the moon in 1972, much has changed, with new technologies taking center stage. As part of the Artemis program, the 2025 mission will not be limited to a temporary stay on the moon. A long-term settlement is planned. Initially, humans will stay on the moon for just a week, but over time, missions will last longer, a month, two, and eventually lead to the creation of permanent bases. As noted by ESA aerospace engineer Jürgen Schultz, the Artemis programs aim not only to return humans to the moon, but also to lay the foundation for permanent presence on its surface. Subscribe to the channel and stay updated with the latest news from the world of science and space.